As I suggested in the previous video, the framers had a very different perspective on the presidency and what they expected presidents to do. Now, in fairness, it was a very different world. And so it's understandable that they couldn't have conceptualized the world that we're living in now and the circumstances that we would be facing. But to sort of step back a little bit, um, the way the Constitution is um, organized in terms of articles, it's not an accident. Article one of the Constitution deals with Congress. And the reason that Congress was first is because the framers expected the Congress to be the primary decision making body uh, for the United States. That is the place where debates would be had, compromises would be reached, policy would be formulated, and then ultimately passed in the House and then passed in the Senate, at which point it would go to the president, right? Article two, the second article, was des describes the presidency. And the key is, is that the framers expected the presidents to play an important role, but when it came to establishing policy, a secondary role to Congress. Now, don't get me wrong, they're all co-equal branches. And because they're co-equal branches, they each have their important role. But again, the primary decision-making center was supposed to be Congress, the House and the Senate. That's where the debates would be had. That's where policies would be formulated. That's where compromises would be reached. And then it was up to the, then if it passed the Congress, then it would go on to the president and the president would play his role. I mean, now it can obviously be a female, but back then it was thought that the president would be a he. So with that in mind, let's talk about the formal powers of the president as specified in the constitution. The primary role or one of the primary roles is that of the chief executive. Um, the Constitution states that the president's job is to make sure that the laws are faithfully executed. Now, it's worth thinking about what that actually means. Make sure the laws are faithfully executed. The idea is, is that Congress passes laws, or more accurately, Congress passes bills that eventually can become laws, but Congress passes the laws or formulates the policy, and if they get signed into law, the president is the one who puts them into action. But once again, the primary role is of that of Congress to formulate policy. But this is where this idea of checks and balances came, comes in, because one of the things that the framers did was they gave presidents veto authority. Now, in case you're not sure what veto authority means, what that means is that if a bill is passed in the House and in the Senate and it goes to the president, the president can veto the bill, which means the president can say, I disapprove of the bill that Congress just passed. When the president writes a veto message, the president will explain why he decided to veto the message, right? Now, getting back to the primary role of Congress and the primary role of the president, presidents were not supposed to veto policies or bills just because they disagreed with them. That wasn't the job of the president as I've said over and over again, it was the job of Congress to formulate policy. So presidents weren't supposed to veto bills just because they disagree with them. They do it all the time. That's just not what the framers intended. Well, then why did the framers give presidents the authority to veto bills. Well, they were supposed to 
veto bills in order to prevent Congress from passing what I'm going to call for right now, bad laws. And I'm using air quotes around the word bad to emphasize the notion of bad laws. What do I mean by bad laws? First, if a bill is poorly written, the president is supposed to veto the bill. Now, why would that be the case? Keep in mind that it's the president's job to carry out the law. If a bill gets passed and the president signs it, the president's the one who's supposed to carry it out to make it happen. But what if one part of the law contradicts another part of the law? What if one part of the law is so vague that the president has no idea what Congress wants them to do? Right? It's like getting a set of instructions where you have no idea where part A and part B and part C goes. If a Congress writes a bill, the president is supposed to veto that bill, send it back to Congress and say, I don't know what you guys want me to do. This part contradicts this part. This part doesn't make any sense. Fix it and send it back to me and I will sign it. So the first kind of bad law that presidents were supposed to issue vetoes over are ones that are poorly written. But presidents were also supposed to veto bills that in the president's perspective, the bill, if it became law, would be unconstitutional. In other words, some part of the bill from the president's perspective violates some part of the Constitution. Now, let's stop for a second. These days, who's responsible for determining whether laws are constitutional or not? Is it the president? No, that's the job of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the one that determines whether or not laws are unconstitutional, not the president. And by the way, the Supreme Court does that using a power called judicial review. Don't worry about that right now. We'll talk about that later. But it's through the court's power of judicial review that they're allowed to review a bill or a law and decide that it's unconstitutional. But here's the thing about judicial review. It's not in the Constitution anywhere. Article 3 describes the powers that the courts have, and it doesn't say anything about judicial review. Well, that isn't an oversight. It was the president's job to issue vetoes if a bill was unconstitutional. Do you remember in the last video I talked about Scott James, this professor from UCLA? who studies the presidency. And he said, from the framer's perspective, the president has a constituency of one, one person he's answerable to, or one thing he's answerable to, the Constitution of the United States. If Congress writes a bill that's unconstitutional from the framer's perspective, it is the responsibility of the president to veto that law and send a message back to Congress explaining why the bill was vetoed. So again, presidents have the authority to veto or disapprove of bills passed by Congress, but they are not supposed to veto a bill just because they disagree with it, or at least that's not what the framers had in mind. They're supposed to veto bills if they're poorly written or if they're unconstitutional. Now, it's important to understand the power of the veto and what the framers of the Constitution wanted to do and what they definitely did not want to do. And I'll explain that in the next video.